Welcome back, all of our Florida Powerboat Club members and YouTube viewers, to another great episode of Powerboating Excitement with members of the Florida Powerboat Club. And you are watching uh, a few shots from our previous episode featuring the Miami Boat Show Poker Run, where we had full coverage of the Friday Fun Run, which stayed in Miami and went up the Miami River for a fun lunch for about 40 powerboat teams. And a great variety of boats from this 24-foot cigarette Firefox to an amazing selection of brand-new high-performance center consoles, V-bottoms, and catamarans, many of them coming straight from the Miami Boat Show. We had Whitney and Haley on board having some fun and plenty more of their friends later on in the show as we feature the Miss Florida Powerboat Club Bikini Contest. Right now, it's all about the boating, and I know you guys are anxious to see the entire fleet of high-performance hardware that attends this event every year. We're in our 23rd year of the Miami Boat Show Poker Run, and this year we're getting started right here at Hallover Inlet. And you can look off in the distance, you can see Hallover Marine Center. That's our headquarters for launching this event, which has now reached about 45 offshore power boats heading now on the intracoastal waters straight from Miami because it's very rough offshore. In fact, the seas blowing a four to six feet, winds, strong winds out of the east, so we've decided now for two days in a row, it's probably safer to stay on the inside as we head down to Miami. We'll make our way into Biscayne Bay for a straight shot to Key Largo on protected waters. And I know that it's all about fair weather boating with this crew. Doesn't matter how big your boat is, if you're not on nice waters, you won't enjoy the ride quite as much. So we've made plans today to stay on the intracoastal. The 23rd annual Miami Boat Show Poker Run is presented by Mercury Racing and by a long list of leading manufacturers, dealers, and service providers who work closely with the Florida Powerboat Club, supporting our organization, many of them for several years. One of our sponsors is Hallover Marine Center, where we were able to have a little Thursday night kickoff party. So here's a quick flashback to Thursday night where many people got their chance for a tour of this incredible facility, which supports over 500 offshore powerboats. It's managed by a nationally recognized marina operating company called Westrek and the staff there are experts in their field and they always roll out the red carpet to FPC members. You know, if this marina was closer to home, I would just set up an office here because it's so much fun to come down here on any given day, whether it's a weekday or a weekend, to see all these awesome powerboats on display. And the marina manager, Rick Van Letten, is an old friend from back 25 years ago where he used to manage the Sunny Isles Marina where actually Florida Powerboat Club got its start back in the early 90s. West Trek's regional manager, John Lewis, and his staff have really gone out of their way to make Florida Powerboat Club members feel very welcome here. They have over 500 boats in storage, but it's this building that is really an eye-opener. It's one of the largest of its kind in the country, storing more than 500 full-size boats, whether they're 38-foot Top Guns or 52-foot MTI Cats. All over Marine Center customers have the peace of mind knowing their boats are handled professionally in one of the cleanest facilities in South Florida. We're at the <laughs> We're at the Hall over Marine Center. Thanks for your hospitality, John. Even if you couldn't make it, we're in your barn. We've had a few drinks. We're enjoying the tour, and we are on the Miami Boat Show Poker Run 2018. Right now, so let's hear it, everybody. Come on, let's hear it. We're back out on the waterways as we catch up with the pack, heading south on the intracoastal waterways, uh, making our way through the first bridge at the Broad Causeway. We've got about a half hour ride through these protected waters. And here's a chance to take a closer look at some of these new black waters. That's the brand new A43, powered by Quad Mercury Verado 350s. And of course, the brand new 39 just ahead, Mark Fisher on board. This is a new boat with the deep impact bottom. Um, but a black water traditional look with the high sides, uh, tall freeboard, and flared out bow, which is a great fishing machine. Seakeeper newcomers on board, their first event with the club. We just passed their contender. And here's that new 399 Deep Impact. Uh, Dr. Jason Parker from Louisiana enjoying that boat. really seeing some of these pictures for the first time because uh, as I may have mentioned in our last episode, 
This is a very unconventional uh, format for us to be leaving from North Miami and staying on the inside, but with the sea conditions being extremely rough in the offshore uh, coastal waters, this is the only safe way to really conduct this event. And I think everyone was quite happy with the format. But what it does require is uh, a few little sections of idle speed zones. I think everyone was cool and they just kind of chilled out and understood that that's the way we needed to do things. Remember, it is February, so it is in season, and therefore we have tougher boating restrictions when it comes to going fast. So let's take an opportunity to close in a little tighter on some of our uh, participants here. The boat in the foreground is actually a center console or a side console. Looks like it kind of could use a T-top, but at this point, this new Predator uh, 337, a boat that just arrived over from Norway a couple of months earlier for the Key West Poker Run. This is Andre Bakagard. He's the creator of the Predator line. Uh, this is the, what they call the 337. Of course, the first boat we all remember was that big red 44 that he brought uh, two years earlier and attended the Key West Poker Run. We do have to slow down again for another bridge. This time it's the 79th Street Causeway, uh, which forces everyone to just uh, come off plane and kind of just chill out and enjoy the ride here, the scenic ride through Miami. A lot of people were making this trip for the first time. They had not done this route before, and they thought it was kind of cool that now they know, and it's on their GPS, that if they ever have to come back through the inside, they know that they can take uh, this route instead of going down the main ICW. But just getting through now the 79th Street Causeway, you're allowed to go immediately back up on plane. And what you can't see here from this helicopter shot that the boaters can see is that off to the port side, you can see the high rises from Miami Beach, but really the, the big part of the scenery that I think everyone appreciated was some of the beautiful homes that line the shoreline here uh, through Miami Beach, and some of them are absolutely beautiful. Now we're getting a great close-up here of uh, David Petrantoni uh, from Florida's West Coast. He's a new dealer for Blackwater, and he's getting his brand new Blackwater 43 powered by Quad Mercury 350 Verados. And he sent in his video bio after the event, which was great because he said that he really had a fantastic time on the Poker Run. It's his first time on a Florida Powerboat Club event. He said that he met really a whole bunch of great people and he got a really warm welcome. So that was a good experience for him. Uh, David, uh, thanks for sharing that. Their dealership is located in Newport Ritchie. The website is outpostboats.com. And I'd like to welcome and introduce a new team to the Florida Powerboard Club family. This is Team Seakeeper, who are running a 32-foot contender. It's a demo boat for their Seakeeper product. Now, for those of you who are not familiar, Seakeeper is a gyro stabilizing unit. Very, very popular with yachts and commercial vessels. And now they are breaking ground into the recreational boat market in the 30-foot plus category. Uh, obviously great for fishing uh, and less seasickness as a result of that but also getting into the performance center consoles uh, and I think that this demo boat if anybody's ridden on it would know that it really really does work so nice to have you guys on board and I'm sure we're going to be seeing a lot more performance center consoles with the Seakeeper brand uh, installed right at the factory and another team that came a long way to attend. Uh, in fact, they're just riding on the heels of the Miami Boat Show. This is Bernie Newhouse and his crew from Team Marine Unlimited from New Jersey. Now, they just worked the Miami Boat Show for Nortec uh, because they are a dealer, and they're bringing now out this uh, 34 Nortec center console powered by Triple Yamahas uh, making the run here today. And a big sharp contrast now going to a big fast cat. Joe Castellana from New York and Team Awesome Motorsports. 38 skater with big sterling 1000s uh, per side. Love the paintwork on this boat. What a great looking skater. And in fact, the only skater on the Miami Boat Show Poker Run, one out of over 40 registered boats. So uh, quite a contrast to the previous uh, Key West Poker Run. And the man that should win the farthest traveled award, uh, Brian Houchins all the way from California. And it's very fitting that he is in a California built 34 foot Kachina. Uh, a boat that we rarely see on these poker run events. In fact, I don't think I've seen one of these 34 Kachinas for more than 10 years on a Florida Powerboat Club event. As you can see, it's got the open bow uh, and uh, a nice little setup. Definitely a California thing with the open bow. And a, another cigarette, uh, again, one of 10 cigarettes registered. John and Brent Wax from Tampa, Florida area. 36-foot cigarette gladiator team, a poker face. 
Uh, he's got Richie Zool power, and that is typical of these boats that were prepared uh, by Phil Lipschitz uh, down at TNT or beside TNT Marine Center in Miami. Uh, and here's some great onboard camera work provided by John. He mounted about three or four GoPros on the boat and gave us a whole bunch of great footage of uh, him and his wife, Bryn, uh, buzzing through these waterways on the run. Uh, hey, guys, the more you do this, gathering up your own content using the GoPro cameras or even your own iPhones, uh, this is a great content contribution to our production. Uh, we appreciate it, and we want to see more of it. Now a closer look at this new Deep Impact 399. Obviously a sponsor for the event, Deep Impact, and their sister company, Blackwater. Dr. Jason Parker from Louisiana. This uh, first Deep Impact for him with Quad Mercury Racing 400 R Verados. Just taking it easy right now. This boat is an 80 plus mile an hour boat. You can see he's only going about 40 miles an hour right now because while he's not really in a hurry and none of us are really because we're on this intracoastal route, we're going to get a chance to go fast when we hit Biscayne Bay. And here's a nice shot as the boats turn to go through the Venetian Causeway Bridge. This is the uh, East Causeway Bridge. There's two of them all together. This, is, of course, is the lower one now. They've redone the one that is over on the west side by Sea Isle Marina, and uh, it gets a much larger clearance. So this bridge is not your friend if you've got a center console uh, because you really only have about 9 or 10 foot clearance, and some of the center consoles are above that. Now, of course, you can just get on the radio and call the bridge master. As long as you're not on weekday rush hour traffic, they will open the bridge on demand on 15 minute intervals. So you can pretty much get through the bridge quickly and be on your way. And here's some great footage, which I truly enjoy. I really like watching the power boats go through the Port of Miami here on the merchant side with that big container ship off in the background, Fisher Island to the right, of course, and then there in the background, Miami Beach. So this is a path that we don't take very often, but now with uh, doing more departures out of Hallover Marine Center, this is a more popular course where we come down either on the inside or into Government Cut make our way through the port and then across to uh, Key Biscayne and Biscayne Bay. Now, uh, you guys all remembered uh, the movie Captain Phillips with Tom Hanks as a star. That, of course, involved a Maersk Line container ship, and that in the background is a Maersk Line ship, almost identical to the one that was depicted in the movie. Obviously a true story, but uh, just a little trivia for you today, guys. Stephen and Ashley Rack in their new 32-foot Doug Wright cat they bought this boat last year and were hoping to have it ready for the Key West poker run. It didn't happen, so they just on a whim told me a story. It was kind of funny. They went out and bought a 52-foot Outer Limits with Mercury Racing 1550s. Team got to go, and they brought the boat on the Key West run while they were waiting for the Doug Wright. So now they've got the Doug Wright, so here they are enjoying the Miami Boat Show run. And another all-white boat. Uh, we saw them earlier. This is uh, David Petrantoni and his team in this 43-foot Blackwater. And now they're, they're out into the open water. They're picking the speed up just a little bit. And we've got to slow down just as we pass through the Rickenbacker Causeway. But this will end the bridges, uh, thank God. We've gone through about four or five bridges since we left Hallover. And we pretty much have to come off plane each time. But now that we are into the open waters of Biscayne Bay, it's going to be open throttle for some of these teams that like to go fast. And for everybody else, it's going to be a nice scenic cruise for the next 50 miles into Key Largo. And just as I had just mentioned, uh, some of you guys I know are very anxious to get on the throttles and really wind things up. And that's exactly what Dara Ceriza did with this 38-foot uh, Donzi comp. It's a very popular racing model back in the day, a sit-down Donzi with a great haul, a very fast boat. And uh, Darius is very proud of the engines, too. They're basically pumped up to 825 horsepower aside with Whipple superchargers, and he loves driving this boat fast. He's a motorsports enthusiast, drives a Ferrari 458. That's his daily driver, but he says he loves this Donzi even more. 
and uh, Dara sent back in his video bio that uh, his uh, take home from the event that it really was a blast. He enjoyed the great food and being around all the fast boats. But the real fun for him was getting a late start. It gave him an opportunity to really test this boat's performance and run it hard. Uh, and he caught up to the pack. In fact, was very proud of the fact that he was one of the first guys to arrive at the lunch stop in Key Largo. And let's welcome Cass Schubert and his crew all the way from Texas in this 38-foot cigarette Top Gun liquid Prozac. The boat has been completely redone in the last year or two. Cass is very proud of it. Uh, it's a, been a great poker run platform for him. He's done dozens and dozens of poker runs with this boat, not only in Florida, but in Texas and everywhere in between. So a great supporter of the club. Cass, nice to have you back. And a new a rendezvous location that's actually new to the format. Now, it's very traditional to do our poker card here in Biscayne Bay at Grove Harbor Marina. And we decided today that we would change the format up just a little bit. So Alan Lima, the owner of Grove Harbor, got in his 84 Lizara with uh, some friends, as you're about to see. There's his friends. Yeah, yeah, not a single guy, just him and like 10 girls. Uh, or maybe 11, I don't know, I lost count. But he said, no, we'll do the poker card off my yacht. So that was the plan. Uh, it was a little windy earlier, so we actually had called it, decided that it might be a little tricky to bring all the boats up close to the Lazara. We didn't want to have any fender benders, any scratch paint jobs. So we apologized for Alan because he actually had it set up nicely with the fenders and everything. But uh, we just decided it wasn't really a good idea to try to do the card there and uh, have any scratches. So we came by. We, we, we went by about three times so we could get this picture, of course. <laughs> So this uh, does remind me how important the eye candy is for us here at Florida Powerboat Club. Let's do a flashback now to Friday night where we staged the Miss Florida Powerboat Club Bikini Contest. It was a very festive evening at Duffy's Sports Grill. That's where we did the official check-in. And then we did a brief captain's meeting followed by the Miss Florida Powerboat Club contest. So this was a, a big contest with a lot of pretty ladies. Uh, here's the staff that was helping with all the check-ins. And they really provided us uh, a fantastic venue here at Duffy Sports Grill. I um, want to thank the staff for being so friendly to us. This is the meeting room that we used for the captain's meeting and for the check-in. So this took uh, the early part of the evening up here on Friday. But the Poker Run Village was a new addition to this event uh, here at this new venue. And Duffy's gave us an entire parking lot where we were able to display this brand new sport chassis truck from our sponsor, TD Wall as well as uh, all of our manufacturing and dealer sponsors. Of course, Blackwater returned with a brand new boat. It's a 36 Blackwater full cabin version. Midnight Express, as always, with their beautiful 43s. This one, a 43 open, powered by Quad Mercury Verados. Uh, I love the gold and the blue paint job. This boat has always been a big hit, whether it's on a trailer or in the water. And speaking of in water, we had also about 500 feet of sponsor dockage along their waterfront and of course beside that is a giant patio where all of the guests can sit outside by the pool and look at the views i mean it's beautiful out there you've got a nice view of miami beach or sunny isles beach you've got the pool if you want to jump in and and cool off uh live entertainment musical entertainment all the time i mean this is a very festive uh atmosphere that we have here for this event and right here on the duffy's dock they allowed us to park all of our sponsor boats and participant boats. Anybody that wanted to stay here could dock during the daytime and all night long. And we paid extra security to come in overnight and keep their eye on all the boats. There's that brand new Seakeeper on the 32 Contender. I think that a lot of the sponsors were very happy with this venue at Duffy's and will certainly give it a shot for 2019. Meanwhile, it's all about the girls and why we're here tonight, and that is to celebrate the girls of FPC, and hopefully we'll be able to crown one of these lovely ladies as our Miss Florida Powerboat Club 2018. I took a moment to do a shout out to one of our poker run exhibitors, Jupiter Bike, who brought these really cool electric bikes uh, to the show and we actually awarded one as a prize for the poker runners. But it's all about the girls and uh, time to introduce them one by one. This is Sydney, this beautiful lady who would love to be Miss Florida Powerboat Club and all of these lovely ladies like Shay who joined us on the Tampa Bay Poker Run last year and a lot of them have done Florida Powerboat Club events before and some of them are new to the equation so 
Either way, it was a great format for a Friday night party. Special thanks to Heather Whittle, who's also a model who's helped me for a number of years with recruiting models, but she also stepped up to the plate as our MC for this contest. So thanks to Heather and for all these pretty ladies for putting on a great show. Let's crank it up a little bit and enjoy the show before we get back to the boats. Well, the night was cut short by the rain, but uh, thankfully our judges got a good chance to look at all of our contestants. And when all of the votes were tallied, Melissa Garcia won the title of Miss Florida Powerboat Club 2018. Congratulations, Melissa. We'll be seeing more of this lovely lady in the magazine and at future Florida Powerboat Club Poker Run events. And we're back to the Saturday run as we catch up with Florida Powerboat Club members heading for Key Largo. This is Jeff Campbell, came all the way from Texas in his new 38 statement, uh, powered by Triple Mercury 400Rs. His last boat was a quad boat. And another 38-foot statement, uh, love the paint job on Easy Money. This is Jeff and Carrie Babineau from Louisiana on their first Florida Powerboat Club poker run. Looking great and enjoying the ride on Biscayne Bay as we head further down towards Key Largo. And here's one of the first 34 MTIs ever built. This is Black Diamond Express. Uh, the team is from Oklahoma, and they keep all their boats in the Destin area. Black Diamond Express, of course, is the sister ship to the 52-foot Black Diamond MTI, which is a big 1350-1550 uh, boat. But this one's powered by just Mercury 400 Arvorados, and I did finally get a chance to ride in this boat uh, just a little while back. Uh, it runs great all day long at 100 miles an hour, uh, but what's really cool is that it burns virtually no fuel. You could spend a whole weekend on this boat and only burn 100 gallons, and I think that's what's cool about these new 34-foot MTI cats. And let's say hi to newcomers to the club, Jeff and Brenda Jacobs, who came from Maryland. And this is exciting because this is their very first poker run. The very first time they've used their boat, this 36 Gladiator, and it's their very first performance boat. So I think they're doing great. Uh, just look at this shot. They're up with the front runners, running with this pack of cigarettes, and really putting on a good show. And congratulations uh, on your new boat, guys, and thanks for joining us here uh, with the Florida Powerboat Club in the middle of winter here for this February event. And now a closer look as we zoom in on Kevin and Melissa Welsh. Uh, also newcomers to the club with this 35-foot cigarette top gun. They actually called this boat a special edition. It was a Playboy edition, uh, which they made in the early, like, 01, 02 bracket. This one is a 2002 model. And, of course, these boats always came with Mercury Racing or Mercury Power. But this one has got uh, power from innovation. It's got 650, so a total of 1,300 horsepower. He says it's working out well for him uh, dealing with innovation out of the Sarasota area. Obviously, that's an engine builder that we've all heard before. But uh, they're not in the mainstream, it seems, with recreational ball, and they do a lot of military contracts. But uh, he seems to be running great and uh, says he's going to be hardcore with the club now and get involved in more events. And he proved that by joining us again just two months later at the Fort Myers Poker Run. And back again now with Sal Olivia, who's uh, got a great track record now with doing these Florida Powerboat Club events. He's on a second event now for 2018. He joined us for the Winter Poker Run in January down to Key Largo. 
and now he's back again uh, for the Miami run. And really, out of these 10 cigarettes that are attending, he's going to be at the top of the food chain with these twin 700 SCIs, uh, a 42X, uh, which has been completely redone uh, by David Hunter. Recently did a completely new paint job. So the boat is really, in my opinion, as good as new, and I think Sal feels the same way. So leading the cigarettes today, altogether 10 of them, as they blast across Biscayne Bay. And we saw him just a little earlier in the show, uh, once again with Darius Sariza, this 38-foot uh, Donzi SC comp sit-down boat uh, with some big power. Once again, like I said earlier, Darius loves going fast, and I think the fact that he actually passed uh, that other cigarette just now pretty much made his day. So I think that Darius really ought to take a serious look at offshore powerboat racing. He'd be damn good at it. And we had a good look at this boat earlier in the show. This is the new Blackwater 39, uh, an entirely new boat to Blackwater. The first one like it with the Deep Impact Bottom, their sister company. But obviously the, all of the comforts of a Blackwater with the wide beam and a really flared out hull and a lot of freeboard. Look at how much freeboard on the bow of this boat, making it truly a fishing machine. But what's also different about this is the four Mercury Racing 400 Verados. You haven't seen that on a Blackwater before, uh, but this is a real hot rod for Blackwater. Mark Fisher at the helm today, uh, big sponsors with the club. And while they're building a fishing boat, it still is a very poker run friendly boat. 39 feet overall, a lot of room in the cockpit, so plenty of room for all your friends. And uh, definitely a new addition to the Blackwater lineup. Of course, their mother ship, their flagship of their fleet is gonna be that big 43. We've got another one on the run right now, and exactly one year ago that Blackwater introduced the new 43. Congratulations to them on this new 39 model, and I'm sure we'll be seeing more from this great company over the coming years. And time for a closer look at this very, very popular Midnight Express 43 Sport, uh, five Mercury Verado 400s. This belongs to David and Jenny Landsman from Maryland, but you'd never think they were from Maryland because this boat is in Florida a lot. Uh, in fact, they launched the boat last fall. Uh, they took delivery just before the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show and made the Key West Poker Run their debut poker run with this boat with front row dockage at the Conk Republic Seafood Company where they proceeded to put on a fantastic show. But since we're in the winter season, they pretty much would leave this boat down in Florida uh, for most of the winter. And then, uh, of course, they'll take it home to Maryland and do all the poker runs uh, through the summer months there. So this boat, usually with a big crew, a very spirited crew, I might add, uh, always putting on a dock party. The sound system, you can't hear it now, but it is one awesome JL audio system. I don't know how many amplifiers are in there or how many speakers, but it's about as good as it gets. And of course, Midnight Express, one of our sponsors here for this event, as always. And this is their sister ship to the boat we just saw. This is also a Midnight Express 43 with five Mercury Racing 400s. Now let's welcome Donnie Snyder from Connecticut and his whole crew. Got a big team on board today. Uh, about eight or ten of them on board and plenty of room in this big cockpit of this 46 foot Outer Limits Team Blueprint uh, boat that's powered by Mercury Racing 1075s and a boat that's uh, been in the club and stayed in the club since it was new. Well the cats are out to play today we just saw a 34 MTI and here's a 38 foot skater Joe Castellana again uh, from New York. Now a better chance really to see this boat because the skater is in its element in the open water right now. And even with the 2000 horsepower, they could be running an awful lot faster. But we saw them earlier in the show on the Intracoastal when they were pretty much stuck driving about 50 miles an hour. Now they're running more like 65, 70, not really pushing the throttles too hard. But I really like the look of this boat. It's the only skater 
on this entire event, which is a sharp contrast to Key West, where we had 24 skaters registered in our 180 boat roster. I would label this as a beauty shot as we pass through the Cart Sound Bridge. That's uh, David Landsman down there in Team My Way. And you can see the big pack following them through Card Sound and, of course, the Card Sound Bridge, which is a landmark arriving here in the Florida Keys. Technically, we are already in Key Largo, but there's really not much to do in this immediate area. Of course, if you went down along the spans of the bridge uh, back towards the mainland, you'd be at the Alabama Jacks uh, watering hole, a neat little rustic waterfront place that... Uh, people like to stop at but it's really only capable of handling maybe five or six boats at a time so certainly not very poker run friendly especially when you have over 40 boats. And from the Card Sound Bridge across Barn Sound it's about five or six miles across this bay and here we are now arriving in Jewfish Creek. Once again uh, a landmark channel that brings you into what I consider to be the gateway to the Florida Keys. Uh, technically, we've already been in Key Largo for a while, but this is where we really feel at the, for the very first time that we've arrived in the Florida Keys, bringing the boats off plane through these mangrove waterways, which isn't really something that we have to do by law, but I think we're just doing it out of care for the other boaters and for safety reasons. When you do have a big pack of poker run boats arriving here in Jewfish Creek, and remember now it's a Saturday, what you can't see is there's probably a bunch of people fishing along the edge of the mangroves, and I think this is just common courtesy to bring the boats off plane. After all, you can see here in this video, it's only maybe not quite a mile, less than a mile from the entrance of Jewfish Creek right to the waterfront there at Gilbert's where we typically would stop. Obviously not a lot of traffic at Gilbert's with just one or two boats. Remember, they're still having problems with their docks there that were damaged during Hurricane Irma. They have not yet got the permits to replace them. So this is really putting a damper on their boating business and it's really hurting their business. But uh, fortunately they're managing, the Tiki Bar is open there and they still get a lot of uh, traffic from the motorists and the motorcycle uh, groups that like to cruise down to Key Largo. And here we are now arriving at our destination in Key Largo. That's Sundowners down below with the green awnings and you can see the boats are starting to dock up. Not a lot of dockage, but with patience and uh, common courtesy, we're gonna be able to get several boats in. Right next door, the Big Chill, which is a very popular destination also. As you can see though, not a lot of dockage. So that's the biggest challenge here in coming down to the Florida Keys, especially when you have a big group. But they were ready for us today, and as you can see, they've got some help on the dock. And we started squeezing the boats in one by one, uh, some rafting along the wall in front of the Blackwater Marina, some along the restaurant called Senor Frioli's, and of course, uh, the rest on the face dock there at Sundowner. So no matter what, uh, we were able to get everybody in. I think the raft of boats got out pretty deep from what I can remember. Uh, from the pictures I saw. Now, I wasn't here. Why? Because 
My cigarette, Top Gun, finally gave up. I got one poker run out of that boat. The 18-year-old motors weren't going to make it to Key Largo. We broke down in Biscayne Bay, and we ended up getting towed back in to Coconut Grove. So it's the first time that I have not made it to the lunch stop on my very own poker run, but I understand that everything went very well, and everyone tells me that the food here at Sundowners was absolutely incredible. And you know me, I don't like to miss a meal, so that was really hard to take hearing that the food was awesome. So as our crews enjoy lunch here at Sundowners in Key Largo, this is a great spot to just break away and wrap up our coverage here in segment two or part two of our Miami Boat Show Poker Run. When we come back with our next episode, which is number three, we'll have continued coverage where the helicopter will join the boats heading back from Key Largo back to Miami for a big party on Saturday night where we're going to play out the poker hands and give out some prizes. So another uh, fantastic episode yet to come. Stay tuned here on YouTube. This is Stu Jones, president of the Florida Powerboat Club, celebrating 25 years of powerboating in paradise. Thanks again to all of our sponsors who joined us for the 23rd edition of the Miami Boat Show Poker Run, which has taken an altogether new approach to the venue. And I think that most of our sponsors and a lot of our participants were very happy with the format. If you want to find out more about Florida Powerboat Club, it's right here. Uh, Florida Powerboat is based in Pompano Beach at flpowerboat.com. Be sure to follow us on Facebook at FL Powerboat. Florida Powerboat Club is our YouTube channel, and we ask that you subscribe so you get all of the notifications for this true Florida Powerboat Club content. Of course, you can follow us on any one of our four Instagram pages. We've got plenty of great events planned for 2018, so stay tuned for more action featuring members of the Florida Powerboat Club.